They're called disco clams because they're flashy. They're so bright that people actually originally thought it was bioluminescent, but in reality, one side of their tissue looks bright white and the other side of the tissue is red. And they roll back and forth between the two sides, which makes it look like they're flashing. Really, they just flash all day long. <laughs> Lindsay Doherty lives and breathes the water. I've always loved the ocean. I grew up in landlocked Colorado and I've been obsessed with everything underwater as long as I can remember. She's been diving with dolphins, white tip sharks, and humpback whales. But it was on a dive with her family that a tiny clam caught her attention. The dive master actually did the disco move as the signal to show us a disco clam. Disco clam. <laughs> I'd never seen anything like it. For me, the disco clam was just sort of this strange mystery. They're sort of a nature's anomaly. They're a small clam, they're bright red, they flash all day long. And these groovy looking clams can get around. It's pretty comical, actually. I've filmed it quite a bit because it's fun to watch. Sort of similar to jet propulsion, so like a squid move, just squirting water out to sort of propel yourself through the water. We found them as shallow as three meters and as deep as 50 meters. And that's important because the light environment in those different depths is markedly different. When you get really deep, it's all blue light and it's at a much lower intensity. Back at her lab at UC Berkeley, Lindsay created a blue room to mimic the clam's natural environment. So we figured out how the clams flash, and one of the bigger and more interesting questions is why they're actually flashing. And one of our hypotheses is that they're flashing in order to attract one another. To find out if it's true, Lindsay built clam bots made of old shells and a string of LED lights. One of them we actually give flashing lights, and the other we give constant lights, and then we take an experimental live clam and we put them in between the two so that it can actually choose which one to settle nearby. The fact that the clam is wide open is good. If the clam is attracted to the flashing, we may see it move in that direction of the tank. There we go, some movement. So in this case, he's both moving toward the flashing clam and orienting toward it. It's not only how far away are they from the stimulus, but are they directed toward it? Because all of their eyes are in the front of their mantle. Sorry, all of their eyes? A lot of people don't realize that these clams actually have about 40 eyes, uh, and their eyes for a clam are pretty complex. Using transmission electron microscopy, Lindsay can see deep inside the clam's unique eye structure. Behind the retina, we found what we think is a sort of reflective layer. We're trying to figure out now what that reflective layer is composed of in the clams because it's never really been detailed before. 